Hello and welcome back to how to speedrun Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze Puzzle Percent. This is part 4 and we'll be covering Seabreeze Cove today. Seabreeze Cove is the infamous water world, but since Funky Kong can breathe underwater, this makes it a whole lot easier. It is still a little longer, but it's not as tedious since you don't have to play th uh, one level three times. And the music's good too. We're starting out with 4 1. Deep key. So we'll have to go over water first. Just keep pressing X and you'll be good. Collect all the bananas here and get the first puzzle piece. Swim, swim, and preferably get the cave. So there's a special swimming technique that allows you to be fast and precise at the same time. You press X and then press A immediately after. It has a certain rhythm to it, so that you gain a bit of distance, the second puzzle piece is up here, a bit of distance with the X press or the Y press, and then press A or B immediately after. Activate this platform and go down into the depths. Then you have to activate these three lights, wait a bit. And then you can swim through this small gap. Funky Kong's swimming uh, hitbox is a little smaller than you might expect. Also, this is pure luck if you get past the fish with a roll or not. Get the O, damage tank here, and roll into the bonus room. This one's again very simple. We had it in the last part too. Just collect all the bananas by launching yourself out of the barrel. And be a little careful with the barrels if they're not directly underneath you, you need to double jump. It happened to me once that I didn't double jump and I just fell into the abyss, so... Be careful with that. Damage tank again if necessary, hopefully he did have enough hearts for that. And collect the barrel here, swim up, don't get hit here. Go down and collect the puzzle piece in the middle. Funky Kong can also swim against streams, which Donkey Kong can't do without Dixie Kong, which is another huge advantage he has. We have to play this level twice, once for the secret exit and once normally. The secret exit is over here, but most of the time I just play the normal exit first. So let's get it. Activate these three things, swim through the middle. Yeah, you do get hit sometimes for no reason, so, you know. Collect the end. Touch the spikes. Swim down here. And there's another puzzle piece down here. Get, a f uh, get these four banana rings. And preferably take out the eel before it takes, out takes you out. A puzzle piece will appear in the middle, so it's always best to have the left banana ring last. Swim over here, activate these three lights again, wait a bit, the turbine will push you through, just keep swimming without speed boosting through. Now swim a little up, collect the G, get hit, don't, wor uh, don't worry, it doesn't matter, and go down here. Underneath the go barrel, inside the seaweed, there's another few breakable blocks. Or breakable rocks, I guess. Whatever. And there's another bonus room inside. And that's 8 out of 9 puzzle pieces. No, 6 out of 7. Yeah. Okay, fine. So you might be asking, okay, where's the last one? That's in the secret exit. Yeah, the secret exit has a puzzle piece. But since we have to get it anyways, it's completely fine. We'll un we've unlocked 4-2, but we still need to unlock 4-A. Um, also, we need to play 4-A twice as well, cause the secret exit, uh, cause the last puzzle piece is close to the finish, and you can't go back to the secret exit from the last puzzle piece, which is really stupid. So again, splash over the water, dive deep, 
The technique I am showing you right now, I already explained it. X, A, X, A, X, A, X. It's like half a second of difference between pressing X and A. X, A, X, A. Maybe my voice lines don't line up, but I think they should. Alright, we're back down in the ruins. We activate the three lights again, swim a bit. The water levels are faster with Diddy Kong though. Diddy Kong has a speed boosting ability, so let's see if we can go past. Nope. And this fish actually hurt us, which is really annoying. So now we have to be a little careful with taking... not taking too many hits. The thing is, Diddy Kong has a speed boost underwater, which is really powerful, and it's even faster than Funky Kong's speed boost. I mean, Funky Don doesn't have a speed boost, but he can move underwater and swim pretty fast. But you need to keep Diddy Kong at all times, and that's really annoying. Also, you can swim against some streams, which you'd have to use Dixie Kong for, and that just takes forever to get her. Like, you have to get Dixie Kong in a separate barrel, get Diddy Kong back, and all that. So, swim past the secret exit, activate the three lights, swim back, and swim down here. You'll see that this thing fell down, because it apparently got deactivated. You could get the puzzle piece without Dixie Kong, but you can't get the secret exit without her. Alright, that's the secret exit. Good enough. Now, the problem is, we have to play 4-A twice as well, but 4-A is quite fast paced, so it shouldn't matter that much. Right, 4-A, Rockin' Relics. Rockin' Relics. 4-A is mostly over water and partially underwater, which is a really cool concept, and I wish more water worlds did that instead of just having you swim all the time. So the first area has no puzzle pieces. You just roll, and with a precise jump you can even take no damage at all. Ground punt between the two sea urchins to get to the first puzzle piece. This one's again this weird platform bonus room, which is very slow for no apparent reason. Because you have to alternate like this, do the left side first, then go to the bottom, then the right side, then the middle top platform last, maybe when I get there, and maybe I could skip ahead a bit. Nope. Alright, and then you get the puzzle piece. Alright. I would recommend going underwater here, collecting the K and then going over water and jumping into the next pool of water. Swim in here and collect all the bananas. It's best if you do it while you're being pulled in, because you can swim pretty tight circles there. That's pretty good and useful to collect bananas quickly. The puzzle piece appears in the middle, just like it does here, after you collect all these bananas. With Funky Kong you can easily just grab double jump into the puzzle piece, but with Donkey Kong you'd normally have to do something else. Dive down here and collect a few more puzzle um a few more bananas. This level is pretty interesting as most of its puzzle pieces are actually hidden in the small pools of water that are in between the sections, I guess. Oh yeah, and you shouldn't forget this one. It's pretty easy to overlook in a normal playthrough, and it's easy to forget in this playthrough too, except if you perfectly remember every puzzle piece, of course. Alright. Got that. Got that. And got them all. 19 seconds on the clock is pretty good. Roll. Yeah, if the shark jumps out, you can't do anything about that. Just keep rolling. Jump on the penguin. And you have to swim a bit deeper down this time, because there's a um, wall that extends deeper. Collect all the bananas again, this time the six banana bunches with the sea urchins. Okay, I'm not too good at this, but don't worry about it, you'll get a heart later. Jump over here, be sure to not be hit by the owls or hit into them by the weird statue thingy that's activated by lightning. Collect all the bananas here. Don't worry about the slippery slopes, Funky Kong can climb up most of them. But be careful not to fall into the sharks more or, you know, into the owl. 
if you're really low on hearts, you can get one somewhere, I guess. Yeah, right here. If you get lucky. Now, we'll go for the secret exit first, which is up here. Just jump onto the sea urchin when it jumps up. And get the barrel. It's not too hard, you can also use some of the enemies, I think, but we're still missing two puzzle pieces and one letter. Which is a bit, so we'll have to get that too. And the secret exit unlocks the secret second level. Uh, the second secret level, not the secret second level. <laughs> Important to know is that this level can be played in about a minute If you're really good, I haven't done it yet. I think I've my best time was one minute two seconds or four seconds or something like that But since it's based on local cycles and you do glide over the water quite a bit with Funky Kong The thing is the water sections are faster with Diddy Kong so this level is actually faster with Diddy Kong than with Funky Kong, but Funky is not far behind. There are levels though where Funky is further behind. Okay, that was okay. You'll roll a dead shark. Don't worry about being hit a few times, it's just all about getting the level as fast as possible, not in a world record breaking time, because this category is still a little unoptimized and... Listen, if this category ever really goes into the mainstream, like, I don't know, top runners of the game start playing it, then we'll see so much optimization, like, it's gonna be crazy. Okay, the la next puzzle piece is down here. Now I have to watch out for not, um, I have to take care of not being hit, that's fine. Don't get the gold barrel, cross the last puzzle piece is down here, and then get the gold barrel. It's very important because the whole level does take a bit, so not too long, but like it does take a while and you'll lose time if you mess it up, like always. So now we're doing 4-B first, Shoal Atoll. Because again, if we did 4-2 and all the other levels first, we had to go, we'd have to go back over the world map to 4-B. Jump here jump off of the bridge with a grab double jump because normally Donkey Kong can only do that with Dixie Kong but Funky Kong is just good enough to jump up there even if it looks too close to get it it's pretty easy so don't be scared of jumping don't be scared of jumping that distance this is a labyrinth level but honestly it's always the same pattern if it was always mixed up I would have a problem here but it's always the same pattern so it's completely fine Swim up here, through the um, two upper exits, collect the red key, and then swim to the left, up left, to go into the bonus room. Collect all the bananas and get the puzzle piece here. Let's see if I can do that. Just go down, jump, jump, and got it. So, you've got that puzzle piece, right? Now you'll swim back down into the stream. It's very important you get all the puzzle pieces because the streams uh, push you through and you can't go back into the fr um, into this main room I wouldn't call it but like into one of the bigger rooms or the last room you were in because it won't let you back in. The streams are too strong for Funky Kong even. Collect the next puzzle piece down there and then swim down here. Open the green chest, collect the blue key, and go down here. Hope that the yellow is gone. If not, don't worry. It's only one heart of damage, so that's fine. Swim to the far left of the three banana circles. Collect all the bananas there. With a bit of practice, it's pretty easy. And swim into the secret area. This is a secret pathway and no bonus room, by the way. Swim down to the bottom, but make sure, unlike me, to collect all the bananas on the way down. You can either swim like this to make it a little safer to collect all the bananas, 
or you can swim faster but I would really recommend doing it like this if you're not too experienced. That's the fourth puzzle piece but also the golden key for the golden treasure chest. That's very important. So if you're low on hearts right now, you may have noticed we haven't opened up that barrel. Also you may have noticed that with each key we collect there's new enemies all around. Now there's pufferfish, these redfish that are faster, and the pufferfish are really annoying I'm telling you that. So now we are here, and if you're low on hearts, get the barrel. It's no loss, and it might spare you some time if you don't, but I would really recommend at least having two spare hearts here. Because you have to tank damage from that shark to collect the key as fast as possible. Then go to the lock. Don't worry, the shark won't hit you. Yeah, it just lets off. Swim to the top, because for some reason that's faster. Spawns you in further into the tunnel. Collect the G, swim between the platform and the gold barrel, collect the last puzzle piece, and get the gold barrel. This level has to be practiced a bit in order to remember the pattern which you have to do, but in general it's not hard, because you can't mess up that much. Except if you get hit far too much and die once, but it's fine. This level doesn't have checkpoints, I think, so it's really all about um, not dying. Next up, 4-2, High Tide Ride. So you might ask, okay, why did we do 4-B now, as of later? Well, you see 4-5, which is the level that 4-B leads to, doesn't unlock 4-B retroactively even if we unlocked 4-B with 4-A. I've already said that a lot of times. So, the thing is, if we went to 4-5, then went back to 4-B, that would mean a lot of walking on the map, right? Sure, we could use a shortcut from 4-B to 4-5 the second time around, we came back to 4-B, but it wouldn't be that useful. And walking back from 4-5 all the way over to 4-B is a bit of a long way, so yeah, you shouldn't do it. This is another minecart level. The beginning is quite normal, we are very high up for some reason. Jump over the small barrier for the second puzzle piece. Then jump, jump here, and then you can't jump because we're going down into the ruins again. This world revolves a whole lot about um, around ruins and underwater civilization that's probably died out, like it's Atlantis themed. But also quite beautiful in terms of like coral reefs. You need to collect all the banana rows two times. That was the first time. And now is the second time. So to the left track. You just need to hold your Joy-Con in the uh, to the right or to the left, not in some diagonal direction. Also the dynamic camera on this level is amazing, I must say. So now just go on. Jump onto this thing, that thing, that thing, crouch, jump under the sharks. Don't worry if you jump high enough, they can't really hurt you. Or like if you jump at the right time. Also, the music is really good and intense. Jump over here. Don't worry, these um, pieces of rubble will fall down early enough for you to um, pass through that. But the rails uh, going up always slow you down so your jumps are shorter. That's pretty nasty if you mistime your jump, you can just fall down. The next checkpoint is over here, so you can imagine that it's gonna take a while uh, to get back. You don't need to collect all banana rows, it's literally impossible. Just remember to go to the left after you went through the middle, and then back to the middle. Because you need to get the G. And we see a nice fishbowl in the background, and we're good. 4-2 is a little intense, but it's doable, and really it's fairly easy because the movement outside of the minecart section is so minimal that it's just fairly easy. Also, you only need to do one bonus room, which is cool. Now for 4-3, Amis Abyss. I think this level has one of the best, like, designs in the whole game because it I think it doesn't have a bonus room. Oh wait it does. Ugh damn it. So you just jump in the water and start swimming. 
It's beautiful. It's one of those silhouette levels that only shows Funky Kong's shadow. But with a twist, you can see Funky Kong if you light up the area using, I don't know, um, for example, these glowfish or uh, some of the jellyfish. It's really nice. It's like a deep sea level. And if you watch the background, it's, it's pretty beautiful. Like, there's a submarine there. Also, there's a puzzle piece up here. Make sure to get it. The fish here do stay out a while, so just go back in. There's a lot of fish and all. Okay, now here's a bonus room. So grab the penguin because he's closer. Jump, throw, jump again. That's basically the whole thing you have to do to get the puzzle pieces from bonus rooms that are similar to these. This jump throw, jump again, I just did to get into the bonus room, saves me from having to, um, going up again. Saves me like one second or whatever. But hey, every optimization counts. You can also grab the barrel if you want to. And also don't mess up the O like I did. You can still jump out with Funky Kong, and so it's not that bad. But it does cost you time, so be careful. The jellyfish also uh, make this algae retract, and but they also damage you, so be careful. You do need to damage boost later on, and there's not that many hearts here. There's one up there. I could have gotten that, but I always forget it's there. Oh shit! <laughs> A pigeon just flew against my window. I never had that happen, actually. <laughs> It's fine, don't worry. Like, it just flew away out to the other side of the uh, street, onto another house. But, like, it bonked full force. <laughs> okay, there's a heart down here, but don't go into that barrel yet. Because, funnily enough... Uh, oh, Funky Kong also sometimes, when he jumps out of the water, uh, crushes back in full force. Which is really annoying, because he doesn't turn around immediately. That's enough of puzzle piece. So you wanna take damage here and dive through the algae. No matter how you take damage though. Wait, could I also collect the puzzle piece while on the way up? I don't wanna try because in the worst case it's just gonna not give me it, but whatever. Collect the next puzzle piece here. I think we've got everything, but I am truly a master of missing puzzle pieces in this level. Because it's really dark and you don't see much. Okay, I've gotten a few backup parts so I can just swim through the algae again. Even if you take damage twice here and you still have two hearts, it's completely fine. If you have three hearts, well, that's just perfect. You can swim back around using the fish because the algae only activate their electric stuff once they kind of, you know, are fully... I don't know what's the... Fully grow out again, I guess. Now we've got an 8 out of 9. That's good. So we'll swim through the jellyfish. And get the bonus room at the far end. Oh, I think that's also a new bonus room. Though this one's pretty bad. Like, it's even worse than most of the other ones. Because the bananas are spinning and you have to time your jumps. Adjust your uh, distance and all that stuff in order to get all the bananas. It's probably really easy, like, I just did it pretty solidly, but it could also be really, really hard. Hard, not hard. Whatever. And get the banana. I mean, whatever. Then, we're done with that too. So, now the question arises, now what? I mean, we just go, I guess. We already cleared the uh, secret levels and the secret exits at the start of the at the start of the world, and don't need to do them now. So just go. So four dash four. Hold on, what's the name again? Rate eight. It's a really cool level. A nice theme plays in the beginning. I wish it would have played longer, but. You can't listen to it that long, because we have to enter a bonus room up here. I think I missed that puzzle piece once, because I didn't know where it was. 
But yeah, after having 100% the game easily like five to ten times, I'm pretty sure I do know where everything should be, or is at least. All right, roll down here, drop down, and start swimming. There are a lot of mines in this level, but you can just swim through them because there's like four Kong barrels. Like right here there was one and I didn't even need it because I still have like four hearts. Swim up into this crevice? Hole? Whatever. And collect all the banana bunches in order to get the second puzzle piece. Damage boost again. Damage boosting actually costs you a bit of health. Oh, that's rare. Sometimes you can hit these um, weird fish with these saws. I don't know if they're called sawfish. I mean, they're literally called sawfish in German, but I don't know if that's the correct name in English. You can still swim through here. Just mind grabbing the barrel. And there he is. The big one. This is like literally the largest or biggest enemy in the entire game. There's another puzzle piece here, just do remind yourself to get it. Or do remember to get it, I guess. With the swimming technique I showed you in the beginning of the video, again, roll into a breaststroke, into roll, and again, the same thing over and over. Wait for the O, and you got it. You can swim fairly quickly and precisely past all of his obstacles. There's another Kong barrel here, so don't worry about health. And his arms are really shit at catching you. Like, even if they flop over you, you still don't get hit. So, you can just enter this bonus room completely for free. Uh, that's not good. Well, whatever, I'm not speedrunning this right now, so it doesn't matter. It's just for show. And that's good. It's time. <sighs> okay, now he hit me, wow. Get the end between the pufferfish. Very easy to dodge. And you can even go through here if you're really skilled, which I am apparently not, but whatever. Die through here. And get the another barrel. There's four barrels in this level, which is really forgiving, honestly. And then there's a G here. I mean, the G, I guess. You don't even need to dodge these things that much. Just don't get hit here too much. Like, stay on the far right, which will mostly spare you. But you do need to dodge the left sometimes. Like, just remember the pattern, it's fine. Swim up over the second of these uh, arms coming from the right. And swim up and up and up and up. The thing is though... He does kill you if you are too slow, so you can slow down. Either the 2-1 or the 3... Uh, there's two patterns here that are fastest. The 2-1 or the 3. 2-1 describes when you get two mines and then shoot yourself out of the barrel of the other side and get the one mine. So 2, 1, and the 3 is just getting all 3 mines in one fell swoop, which is really good because it's just barely faster. But that doesn't matter. C, stack attack. So C, stack attack is again above ground, so it does have um, the abyss again, so be careful not to fall. Jump up here, roll, and directly after the roll, you grab, jump, and hold grab in order um, to get the bomb. That speeds up the process by a few seconds. Really, it saves a few seconds. It's hard, and you do have to learn it, but I recommend practicing it. It's really easy after some practice. The bonus room up here can easily be missed, but just jump on the penguin and you'll be fine. Roll down, roll on, and on. That's the second puzzle piece. That's the O. Uh, do it with a, 
a double jump in order to not have to um, go down there. Throw the bomb up here. Weirdly enough, the bomb never gets thrown back enough to um, bounce off the platform again. Also, you can just shoot yourself through there. That's no problem at all. Uh, there's no way to bring over one of the bombs from the first line. No, that's dumb. I could have grabbed one of them. Normally, you can do it um, from the second one, but, you know, I'm too stupid to do that. Jump over here with a double jump. A regular double jump, by the way. Jump up here with a grab double jump. Collect the end. Now, this is a pretty mean section, because you have to collect these four coins. And sometimes you get lucky. And somehow end up getting all four coins pretty quickly. But sometimes it's just not good. Uh, sometimes it's just very mean. I don't even know why I grabbed the barrel there. I thought there was a puzzle piece there, even though I didn't even need the barrel for the bonus room. So, let's get it. Again, same collection as every time. At this point, we've seen nearly every bonus room. There's only one that's being added in, like, the last world, and that's exclusive to that world. Throw the bomb, and boom. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. We've got the G, we've got six out of seven puzzle pieces. Jump onto this guy, and ground pound these boxes, get the puzzle piece, and fall down here. In the any percent speedrun, you could drop down underneath the crates and jump into the um, jump into the gold barrel. But in this mode, you need to collect the puzzle piece on the right side of the crates, so you can't do that. So now for the last normal level, four six. Current capers. Jump. But not into the water, because you need to get all these bananas. Which is fairly simple, because you only need to fall down in a straight line after uh, you collected the bananas that are in an angle. At an angle, I guess. Activate this thing, and then you have to stay here. There will be these uh, banana coins. Don't worry, there's a um, cotton barrel coming up fairly soon, so if you take like three hearts of damage, it does literally not matter. I took two hearts, which was pretty much optimal, but you can also clear it without any hearts of damage. But that's hard, so I don't do it. So, activate these three things. Cranky Kong is actually fairly useful in this level, because he can destroy these vines, I guess, with the help of his cane, but yeah, fuck, you can just swim. Double jump up here. A double jump out of the water and then double jump onto the platform. Jump off of the two enemies and go down here while collecting the Kong Barrel. Yeah, it is important to get that this time. You shouldn't get hit here in the first two sections of this urchin rotation or whatever it's called. Um, then, swim down. Collect the heart, get the O, swim down again. Hope that you don't get hit too much. You need to be very careful, because Funky Kong can bonk on the edges of this weird entrance. It's pretty mean. That's pretty mean, yeah. Swim down to the left. Um, the screws are always, or the switches or whatever you need to activate, are always above these middle things. And these middle things also protect you from the sea urchins, which is quite perfect. So the third one is on the right again. Spin roll again, which you do by not moving and pressing X or Y underwater. Collect the next barrel. Swim in between those vines or just get hit and swim into the bones room up here. This is one of these barrel bonus rooms, which is really annoying. But I still got it in 21. 
This is weirdly enough one of the fastest bonus rooms if you do it correctly, but one of the slowest if you don't know how to do it. Damage boost through these vines. And get into the barrel. Now we've collected 5 out of 5 puzzle pieces and only the G is missing. Go down to the bottom, but do be aware that the hitboxes of these saws are deceptively large. Yeah, you just saw it right there. I didn't really touch them, but they still hurt me. Swim down here. You still need one extra heart, because you do need to damage boost, maybe. I guess I just got lucky here. And then you're done. So, World 4 is nearly done. You only need to do the K level and the boss. Well, the boss is annoying, but it's not like any percent run annoying. Because in any percent runs with Funky Kong only, this boss is pretty slow. In any percent runs with um, Donkey Kong allowed, this boss is really fast but also really difficult. But I want to show it off with Funky, because it, I think it's just a little cooler. Because with Donkey Kong, you just smack the boss around a, a lot with Cranky Kong, because his hitbox is technically always out, but you can only hit it with Cranky Kong and not with Funky Kong. If there was a way found to hit it with Funky Kong more reliably, or at least hit it with Funky Kong. Also, ground pound to give this guy back pain. Shoot through here. If you take damage once, don't worry. You need to roll onto immediately onto this weird, very aggressive bumblebee. Also, the camera won't zoom up until you reach a platform or stand on it. So, yeah, you need to be aware of that. Also, we'll we are just shot down into lava land, lethal lava land from Mario 64 apparently. Just shoot through here. Don't worry about being hit that much. It's just like, it doesn't really matter that much. There's no more bees here. Or, I guess very aggressive bumblebees. Be careful with going on the platforms, but it's totally fine. Collect the last puzzle piece. Shoot through here with a little weight. And... You got the present number four. Very good. That leaves us with the boss as the last obstacle in this world. So, you might be asking, okay, why is the boss so difficult? Well, of course, it's an underwater boss fight. So, if you play as Donkey Kong or any of the other Kongs in hard mode, which I wouldn't recommend doing, because it sucks your soul out playing 200%, uh, you'll not enjoy this a lot. Cranky Kong can Donkey Kong and Cranky Kong can defeat this boss quite easily, and yeah, that lag was also on my TV. But Funky Kong has a bit of a harder time. At least Funky Kong doesn't have to breathe air, apparently. I mean, he has a snorkel set, but the snorkel would have to be over water. I don't know, maybe Funky Kong is just too powerful. So this is Fugu, and yeah, he's pretty mad about us going into his coral home. So now he spins and you hit his bum. His... I don't know what it is. His back fin, I guess? Okay, by hitting the fish, you can scale him down and hit him normally again. That gives you two hits. That's really important for later. Alright. Now he swims back over here. Oh, not back over, he wasn't there to begin with. Now he throws a lot of sea urchins at you. And fish again. If you get lucky, you can knock two of the fish into each, uh, one of the fish into another fish. And then knock the fish into him. But that's really hard. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, if you don't get that, the next last phase will be slowed down. Because normally, if you get the two fish hit, like knocking one fish into the other into Fugu, um, you would normally... Um, he would normally puff up and not be scaled down, so he'd only have to inhale air once for this phase instead of twice. That gives you like a bit of an advantage, but the double fish hit is also hard, so don't worry about not getting it. 
it's just gonna roll around and do a lot of stuff and next up we're gonna be having another fish hit so this is a very hard one because he's gonna be blowing a lot of air at you so I'm gonna explain it before that so he's gonna bump against the walls now let him do that the first time try to hit him then go over to the fish here hit him in a straight line into him hope that he's t big enough and you got him. Ah, 24 hits again. Damn it. You can technically get 25, which is the max, but, you know, 25 was hard. And that clears out the fourth world. So, Fugu is a bit harder, but he's still manageable. The whole fourth world doesn't have that many abysses, but the water movement is really important that you get it down. So now, world 5. The difficulty spikes immensely here, as some of the levels include much more hazards, some of them include uh, like way longer levels. Like one of them is really really long and it has a secret exit that you have to play too. And a lot more. So the thing is, the difficulty spikes a lot here, and if you I'd really recommend practicing the first four worlds, but I'd really, really recommend practicing the last three worlds uh, a little more. Because they are really hard, especially world 5, because in comparison to world 4, it's much harder. Technically, world 4 is also harder, but due to being underwater for the most part and having Funky Kong on your side, it's more manageable. So, thank you for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next part. Goodbye.